and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, at Westminster, concern grows about the level of investment in the new high-speed West Coast Line. <laughs> Undaunted by the hygiene scare at his restaurant, experimental chef Heston Blumenthal picks up the ingredients for his homemade chocolate brownies. And after the House of Commons boldly abandons 400 years of parliamentary tradition, the contest to select a new speaker begins. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team, a writer and broadcaster whose book Pies and Prejudice describes his search for the essence of northernness, while Adventures on the High Tees describes his search for Middle England. He is currently searching for a suitably annoying title <laughs> for his next book. Please welcome Stuart McConey. And with Paul tonight, a stand-up comedian who at a comedy festival recently wound up after 40 minutes saying, I could go on, but I wouldn't be as funny. The very words used this week by Speaker Michael Martin. Please welcome <laughs> Reginald D. Hunter. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Stuart, here's yours. Uh, <laughs> some homeless ducks. Oh, um, a previous speaker turning into the current before well, and after yeah there he is being ceremonially kicked out yeah <laughs> order order me a taxi yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes ah and he picked a lousy week to launch his new own brand single malt whiskey <laughs> <laughs> god what's this sam is that footage of him is, is he really on youtube yeah what's that i don't know if it's a clue it says sky news in the corner ah yes yeah, sorry yeah, of course <laughs> See, one of the things you pick up when you've done the show for a few right. years. Is... <laughs> anyway, he's it's gone. A... Yes, he has. He's he gone. Has he's gone. history. But the important thing is the ducks. Yes. Because yes. they're fantastic. I mean, the detail of the expenses just goes on and on. Mm. Every time I think, well, that story's over, yeah. it's back. <laughs> and this morning, we had... Um, we've already had this. At the Labour Party, they have sort of houses which they put themselves in. And the Lib Dems have houses which they put their children in. Um, and the Tories have houses which they put their ducks in. <laughs> <laughs> some, he's claiming for a second home for some ducks. <laughs> so Peter Vigors built a fake island for his ducks, which you can understand because ducks are notoriously incompetent on water, aren't they? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he took to it as badly as a duck to water, as the old <laughs> proverb goes. <laughs> Hoisted by his own canard. <laughs> We've got a picture of Vigors' Duck Island. <laughs> that looks like a weekend getaway for ducks. Yeah. <laughs> On the moat. Yeah, quick quack. Uh huh. <laughs> I suppose the slow duck's out of the question. <laughs> so is that the. Um... <laughs> but there was another man charged £80,000 for checking up on his woods. So Anthony Steen? Yeah. We've got Anthony Steen here talking to BBC Ooh. Radio 4 about his trees. I've done nothing criminal. That's the most awful thing. And do you know what it's about? Jealousy. I've got a very, very large house. Some people say it looks like Balmoral. It's not particularly attractive. It just does me nicely. As far as I'm concerned, and as of this day, I don't know what the fuss is about. What right does the public have to interfere with my private life? None. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing. They just still don't get it. Just... What right has the public got to be interested in how yes. their money is it's spent? spent. Yeah. And it's just jealousy. As you said, it's just jealousy. It's coppice envy. Pure and... <laughs> <laughs> James Pennell, not only did he avoid tax, capital gains tax, when he sold one of his properties, but he took advice on how to avoid tax, which was paid for by the taxpayer. <laughs> <laughs> Back to uh, Speaker Martin. Uh, we'd like to see his res resignation yes, speech. Um, sadly, we are expressly forbidden from showing any sort of parliamentary footage in mm. this uh, programme for fear we might bring Parliament's reputation into disrepute. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, we've commissioned a professional artist to, to do a drawing. So there it is. <laughs> uh, there we are. <laughs> professional artist, how old was he? <laughs> uh, what did Harriet Harman say after the Speaker resigned? 
Did she lead the tributes from the House? She did. She said the Speaker's resignation is an act of great generosity to the House of Commons. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as generous as the House of Commons has been to the Speaker. He gets an 80 grand a year pension and uh, a seat in the Lords. Though he may not get that, because there's a number of people in the House of Lords mm. saying, we don't want you in here. Really? We know this place is discredited, but it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to be in the House of Lords, man. You just, you in a big old house with other men, y'all wearing bathrobes and yeah. no, no clothes on, you just... <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just got some around. of the details slightly yeah. confused. <laughs> <laughs> you walk around the pool table and you go, what's up, Lord? Hey, you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say pool table? Yeah. yeah. You can't have no house with me in it without no pool table. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called snooker over here. <laughs> okay, well, have your little English game. But anyway, <laughs> there'll be a table with some balls on it. Fantastic. <laughs> Has a black man from America ever gotten into the House of Lords? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. Hey, hey, hey boy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dream, too. <laughs> <laughs> this should be quite easy. We had a bloke who used to come on this show quite a lot. He became mayor of London, so I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be quite a <laughs> member of the House of Lords. <laughs> what was uh, Michael Martin's last act as Speaker? Resigned, didn't he? That was it. <laughs> Just before. <laughs> Just before he did Just that. Just before. Well, he's agreed tough new rules on expenses with party leaders. <laughs> he's really cracked down on the freeloading lifestyle of MPs. Uh, so from now on, the only expenses you can claim for are rent, hotel accommodation, mortgage interest, insurance, council tax, <laughs> gas, <laughs> electricity, and phone bills and food and drink. <laughs> so yeah, try sponging on that. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, they won't be able to claim for the future redecoration of a house they're moving out of in order to spend more time with the mistress they carried on with while their wife had treatment for cancer. So uh, that's, that's bad news for Tory MP James Gray. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should imagine he's just spilt his whiskey watching the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan. 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 <laughs> Your obsessions are becoming manifest, yeah. sir. <laughs> I can think of nothing else this week. Then. <laughs> well, what about her and Peter Andre? What do you think is going to happen? Never mind. I, uh, I think they'll come back together again, yeah. Paul. Do you? Honestly, I do. Do you? <laughs> I mean, Peter Andre just... I was reading in the paper that he just been crying and walking around talking about his kids and he crying and just... And he'd been devastated. He going, I just like, stop crying, man. Get your manhood back, man. <laughs> Do something, man. Just, you know, stop crying to people. Go climb a mountain. Go bungee jumping. Try to have sex with Mike Tyson. Anything, man. <laughs> just stop crying all the time, man. How would you advise having sex with Mike Tyson? <laughs> well, you know, you, you go up to oh, him... You've thought about it. You've thought about it. You go up to him, yeah. and you go in understanding yeah. full well it may not go the way you planned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what has Anne Whittacombe... She had sex with Mike Tyson. Yeah. Oh, Anne, come on out! Is she our mystery guest? She has, uh, she's offered herself to be temporary speaker until one's elected. Surely in this day and age, shouldn't we get two speakers, stereo? I mean, it seems to be... <laughs> I think <mean>, mono <laughs> 300 years ago, yes, but now, come on. Uh, who else has had to quit this week from the Tory side? Back on the Tories. Yeah, um, uh, David Cameron's political advisor, Andrew Mackay. Oh, Mackay, he's so. gone, he's part of that. Julie Kirkbride's husband. Yes. That's right, yeah. yeah. He'd emerged, he'd claimed over £140,000 for property he designated as second home, while his Tory MP wife claimed their other property was actually their second home. <laughs> this isn't the first time that Mrs Kirkbride's allowances have been questioned. As early as 2007, mm -hmm. a local radio presenter on BBC Hereford and Worcester questioned her about them in a phone interview. Just have a quick listen to this. You're married to an MP, a very unusual situation, but it uh, appears that you and your husband are both claiming your full second ho housing allowance, uh, £44,000. Uh, I thought the old adage, two could live as cheaply as one, uh, would uh, apply here. Obviously, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I once um, had to speak to Victoria Beckham, posh spicy she was then, on the radio, on the phone. Yeah. For some reason, at the end of the interview, I had to ask her what her favourite record of the moment was. And I said, so, finally, uh, what is your favourite record of the moment? And she said something like, oh, I love you. It was some kind of... It could have been by anyone. And I said, bye. And she went, bye, and put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, meanwhile, owners of this sweet shop in Leicestershire have found a way of expressing <clears throat> their disapproval. <laughs> uh, setting the bar even higher, Richard Graham, who isn't even an MP yet, mm. uh, has already made his mark, um, had to apologise for his behaviour. Anyone know what he has done, the Tory hopeful for Gloucester, this no. week? Oh, no. he, he, after, you know, a couple of large ones one evening, he decides to sit down and write...